there's nothing more that I like than riding my bike and racing and I love the adrenaline and <laughs> yeah, I like to fly down mountains. Being here really gives me a chance to just focus really hard on getting high quality training. Sometimes you don't want to train, it's hard, like you don't feel as good as you want to. Um, it's hard to train, it's hard to race. Um, also, it's kind of an adventure career, like what am I going to do after? Um, will I get there? Will I be able to win money with my bike racing? So being here, being like with other girls that feel the same thing, it makes you feel like you, you belong somewhere. Everyone has their own goals, but they also like genuinely want to see you reach your goals. I got a flat, there's a lot of thorns here in Tucson, so it's a pretty prevalent occurrence. I think it's good for everyone to know how to fix their own flats, because when you're training, sometimes you have to go alone, and it's good to be self-reliant, self-sufficient. I love doing my tempo intervals up Lemon, because it's just such a steady gradient. You can really just get in the zone um, and listen to your music and hammer it out. And then the better you do your interval, the more you get to descend. So <laughs> it's rewarding. The Homestretch Foundation came into being when I was a pro cyclist and I was really struggling to make ends meet. I'd made it to the world tour level. And had I been a man at the world tour level, I would have had a minimum base salary. But the women were deemed, quote unquote, not to deserve one. And that made no sense to me. And I remember thinking, we need to fight this. And at the same time, I was like, if I'm at this level and there is no minimum base salary, then I, I might have to quit this sport. You know, but I wouldn't have to if I were a man at this level. So that was difficult for me to, you know, to handle. When we started Homestretch Foundation, you know, the base salary for men was about 35,000 euro, which is roughly equivalent to 40K US dollars. I saw women leave the sport because they couldn't make ends meet. Athletes can apply for a two to six month residency. And for them, being able to live here and not have to pay rent and utilities is huge. When their paychecks are that small, that it makes a big difference. I'm a waitress, so I just stand up for 12 hours straight. So on my bike after, even if, if I don't feel it, I know that I have less energy to train. So being here, so I have more energy to focus in my training really struggled back home with resting <laughs> enough because uh, I worked part-time job and if I wasn't working then I was I was cycling so um, it's been really nice to be able to to rest properly and stretch and it just keeps all of the niggles um, and injuries prevented. By 2023, the women of the World Tour will have the same base salary of the men at the pro continental level of professional cycling, which is the minor league equivalent to the major league of the World Tour. We will still have to continue to fight and say, no, it's not enough that we just have the same base salary as the pro continental men. We need the same salary as the World Tour men. We're seeing change happen, but we still have to continue to lobby for this inclusion. Being a woman in cycling, gender equality is like pretty much all you think about. I feel like the gender equality um, fight is moving, but moving slowly. 
I'm not sure if it's gonna be fully equal when I end my career, but there's big steps that are being made. This is the medal that I won in Tokyo. On the side here, you can see it says rowing and women's pair. It's very heavy. <laughs> Previous to cycling, I rode. When the pandemic hit, we couldn't train in boats. I bought my first carbon road bike, and then that was primarily what I did for most of my training. And then I guess I just fell in love with cycling to the point that I was like, okay, like I could see myself switching over once the Tokyo Olympics were done. Welcome to the home stretch. Spin with the stretchies. We encourage you to ride next to someone you don't know. And that's one of our things for our, our athletes. We'll find their way next to someone they have not yet met and nice, easy, chill chat ride. All right, shall we roll it? Yeah, sure. Woo! All right. <laughs> On Fridays, we have an event called Spin with the Stretchies, the Stretchies being the nickname for the home stretch athletes. Term of endearment. So on Fridays, we have a ride that leaves from La Buzz on Tanque Verde and it just lasts for an hour. It's 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. And we go out at a very slow pace, you know, tops 15 miles an hour. And we ride, you know, so athletes can talk to members of our Tucson community who might not be professional bike racers, but they just want to get to know, you know, what's it like being at home stretch? And, you know, what's it like being an Olympian? What's it like being an aspiring pro? It was fun riding when you Yeah, it was really today. nice. No problem. Well, have a good rest of your ride. Yeah, you too. You <laughs> Thank too. you. Nice to meet you. Nice yeah. Good. You, you're racing too? Yeah. I'll come watch. Oh, perfect. Okay. Cool. I think we have time to grab coffee before yeah. we leave. Yeah, yeah community group ride that's open to anybody that wants to come out and join us. And it's pretty awesome to see the connections and the kindness that comes from that. So far, we've been able to help 75 athletes from 17 different countries, and we've just started our sixth year. And, you know, we're, we're growing, and it's a beautiful thing to see how this effect has helped so many.